Yo, what's going on, guys? And today I wanted to talk about the Utah Jazz and their offseason. And I want to hear before we start today's video, what do you guys think of the Utah Jazz and their offseason and what they've been able to do? So it, it's very, very peculiar. It's an interesting situation because I don't, I don't think this offseason is a result of last year's offseason. So let me explain. A little expert from an article I read. I'll put the link down below and I'll probably put the article on the screen. It would be more accurate to say the Jazz were losers from the 2020 offseason than from this offseason. Because they had to get rid of Derek Favors after one year of signing him, okay? And they had to use a first round pick just to offload Derek Favors after excitingly bringing him back. And... They had brought him back using the full mid-level exception. So their mid-level exception this year was smaller. And it just it was just a tough pill to swallow. And then Rudy Gobert getting the Supermax. That now, we don't know if he would be worth the Supermax this offseason if he was a free agent. He's going to have huge luxury tax implications for at least the next three seasons. Now, the good stuff. I love Rudy Gay, and I love Eric Pascal. I had one of my subscribers tell me that Rudy Gay is bulking up, and they're looking to play Rudy Gay as a small ball five. I love that idea. Okay? Rudy Gay is a man. Uh, do people forget that Rudy Gay averaged like 20 points, like multiple years? And they also got Eric Pascal, who's another guy who's a... I think a solid four. Like, look, I think both Eric Pascal and Ru Rudy Gay are both going to be playing some small ball fives. We both saw some small ball fives, respectively, for San Antonio and Golden State. Now, I think the thing is, is what they really need to do is that's why they brought these two guys in, because they got destroyed with Rudy Gobert in the playoffs. Now, when we look at this team, a lot of it's the same. Donovan Mitchell, Mayoni, Boyan Bogdanovich, Joe Ingles, Royce O'Neal, Rudy Gay, Elijah Hughes, Mike Conley, Jordan Clarkson, Jared Butler, Eric Pascal, Jarrell Brantley, Rudy Gobert, Yudoka Azimbuki, and Hassan Whiteside. Also, I want to hear your opinions down below. What do you guys, any moves you guys really like from this offseason? Hit that like and subscribe button to help the channel. I don't understand the Hassan Whiteside signing. You have Yudoka as in Buki already, and your problem was getting beat with Rudy Gobert. And if anything, I think Yudoka is just as good as a defender as Hassan Whiteside, or maybe better. And he's more athletic, so he, if anything, Yudoka out of the three of these guys would have the best ability to switch. Even though I'm not, I'm not saying he's gonna, he'd be good at it. He just out of the three of those centers, he'd have the best ability to switch and to be a lot like a better lot. He's a better lot threat, in my opinion, than Rudy Gobert and Hassan Whites at this point. Like, don't get me wrong, I love Rudy Gobert, but I think you don't guys and Boogie. Imagine a pick and roll. Maybe I'm biased because I go to the University of Kansas and I sing Yudoka play. So, but I love Jared Butler. They needed a true backup point guard and they got him. Jared Butler's going to be able to start day one. And he slipped to them because of a alleged heart condition. But he's fine. He's fine. There ain't nothing wrong with him. So then, I think the guys we're going to see a lot more this year. Definitely, I think we're going to see a lot more my uni. Like, look, the starting lineup is going to be Mike Conley, Donovan Mitchell, Boyan Bogdanovich, most likely Royce O'Neal, and then we'll do Rudy Gobert. That leaves probably the second unit being, you know, a combination of Whiteside, Pascal, Gay, then I think Clarkson, Engel. I think right there, that's like the first five guys. And like, that's really there. And then you have the rest of the guys, Elijah Hughes, Mayoni, Jared Butler. They'll probably bring back Trent Forrest. I mean, Jarrell Brantley's good, but I think they'll probably bring Trent Forrest like onto the roster. He's on a two-way, but Trent Forrest was lighting stuff up in the summer league 
so out of the, the young guys, who do I expect to play the most? I think it's probably going to either be Mayoni or Elijah Hughes for their perimeter D, and that's something I think the team needs. But then you could also argue that maybe even, you know, Yudoka has and Buki. Also, Jarrell Brantley has a, a qualifying offer that I, like, I don't think he's been signed yet, but I assume that's what they're going to they're gonna bring him back on. But yeah, I think they're definitely an interesting spot. I don't know if this team is going to be able to turn their fortunes around. Like, do I think the team got better? I think in a sense, yes, the team definitely got better. Okay, I think, I, I honestly think they got young guys that people should look forward in, Jared Butler, Eric Pascal, <clears throat> Elijah Hughes, Mai Yoni, Udoka. Those are old guys. What What is that right there? One, two, three, four, five, right there. And if you can put Trent Forrest in there, that's like five guys you should be excited for on the Utah Jazz is like that are all under 24, under 25, you know? And I think it's awesome. Like they, yeah, they lost George's Niang. And I don't think they're going to bring back Juwan, Juwan Morgan. But I think definitely this is a team that we're looking at. I think Jordan Clarkson, Mike Conley. I think Royce O'Neal will get better. I think Royce O'Neal is going to spend the offseason bulking up and become a true small small ball five, stretch four, like just fully commit, try to become P.J. Tucker 2.0. I love Royce O'Neal. I really do hope he does that because that would be cool. But man oh man it's crazy though it's it's it is crazy so i want to hear your guys's opinions what do you guys think of you know the utah jazz and what they've done this offseason they didn't have much to do this offseason like again because of they were stuck from last offseason that's the worst when prior moves screw you over so i want to hear your guys's thoughts what do you guys think of the Utah Jazz and their offseason? That's basically it for me today, guys. I hope you guys did enjoy this video. We're going to milk this for another 20 seconds if you guys want to hang around for the end of this video squad. The one thing that really gets me is I'm just surprised that Rudy Gobert really, I don't know if his confidence just broke, but he really just failed in the playoffs. He like, I want someone to explain the playoffs. They're bad. Peace out.